So you might remember earlier this year, we took a look at React OS, everybody's favorite operating system that looks like Windows and acts like Windows, but it's not actually Windows. And in that video, we explored the latest release build, uh, 0.4.14, and installed it on one of my XP era computers. But as it turns out, that really wasn't the best possible scenario to give this operating system because there are a bunch of nightly builds that are much newer than the official release build and apparently are more stable despite being called nightly development builds. So I figured today we'd take a look at one of those and we're going to be installing it on this Dell Latitude D531, which is the official React OS testing notebook that the developers use to, well, test the operating system on real hardware. So we're basically going to be giving this operating system the best possible environment to run in, and we're going to see how it performs. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to another video. So we're just going to jump right into it and boot off of the CD here to begin the React OS installation process. And uh, the build that we're using today is the nightly build from September 16th, 2024. And since these builds are released, you know, nightly, uh, by the time you guys see this video, there will be a newer one available. But uh, we are also using a 32-bit version of React OS. Now, there is a 64-bit version available, or technically x86-64, and this system is capable of running that build, but I decided to use the 32-bit version anyway because, according to the React OS wiki, the 64-bit builds do not have WoW64 implemented in them, meaning that we can't run 32-bit applications, and all the software that I want to run on this thing is 32-bit, so that didn't really seem like it would be ideal deal. Uh, but we're just going to go through, we'll select English for the language, of course, uh, and we'll just continue here. We will accept the default device settings. That all looks fine to me. And we are going to just format the existing partition here. We'll just delete that and we will install it on the uh, unpartitioned space. And do we do FAT or better FS? I think I'm going to do FAT because it is the, you know, tried and true file system here. And we'll let it do its thing. And while it's doing its thing, I want to quickly thank Boot.dev for sponsoring this video. If you've been thinking about getting into programming, Boot.dev provides a super fun way to do just that. Their goal is to teach you back-end web development in Python and Go from start to finish. And you won't just learn the ins and outs of programming. You'll also be earning XP, gaining achievements, advancing through levels, and completing quests to compete for a top spot on the global leaderboard. And that's because the entire platform is made to feel just like an RPG, so that you won't get bored and instead find yourself actually wanting to come back to learn more. Boot.dev doesn't want you to feel overwhelmed either. They believe in going deep and taking as much time as you need on the fundamentals so that you'll actually feel confident that you've learned something new. And if you ever happen to get stuck, you can quickly view solutions for each programming challenge or chat in their active Discord server for help. On top of all that, they offer a 30-day no questions asked refund policy, and if you sign up through the link below and use code MichaelMJD at checkout, you'll get 25% off your first purchase. So be sure to check them out, and huge thanks again to Boot.dev for making this video possible. Now, while this is installing, I figured I would address the uh, few comments that I received on the previous video that pointed out that like, hey man, you're using the release build, why didn't you try out the nightly build? Well. Uh, here's the thing, I, I kind of mentioned this in the video, I guess I could have gone into more detail about it, but um, the reason why I wanted to try out the latest release build is because although it is from 2021, it is still the most prominently featured build on the website. You know, if you go there, there's a big old download button for React OS 0.4.14, and uh, they even call it the latest and greatest, uh, which apparently is not accurate because, I mean, although it's the latest release build, there are nightly builds that are newer than it, and apparently it's not the greatest either because I got comments from people saying that these nightly builds are actually more stable, they have more bug fixes in them, than the release build. Uh, which kind of surprised me because I've always associated nightly builds as being more like experimental, you'll have more problems with them. Uh, we're just going to go ahead and reboot here and uh, let it continue. But yeah, I had some people say that they thought that video was entirely useless because I didn't take a look at one of the nightly builds. And that I just, to be honest, disagree with because like I said, uh, it is still the, you know, the most prominently featured build on the website. It's what most people are going to download if you go to the site. 
Something funny that happened too is I saw this tweet from the React OS Twitter account that was like a meme comparing the official release build to the nightly builds and saying that the nightly builds were so much better. And it, it seemed like maybe that was a response to my video. I don't know. It could certainly be a coincidence, which I just thought was funny because I'm like, guys, I mean, I'm not trying to be rude here, but if the nightly builds are so much better than the release builds and they have all these fixes in them and they're much more up to date, maybe you should do another release? I mean, am I missing something here? Like, I'm guessing there's some sort of disagreement among the React OS developers or some roadblock that's preventing this from happening, but I've heard from at least one of the React OS developers on my video that said in a comment that like, yeah, some of us would like to do another release, but all I can say is as long as the current release build is featured so prominently on the website, with that big old download button, that's what most people are gonna download. And I certainly wouldn't fault them for thinking that that's like the most stable, up-to-date, recommended build to use when it sounds like that's not actually the case, at least with some of the React OS developers. Uh, I think it would be nice if maybe the nightly builds were featured a little bit more prominently on the website instead of that little link under the download button. Uh, I don't know, I mean, it's not my project, but uh, that's just kind of my two cents on it, I guess. Uh, but anyways, we're just going to, um, oh yeah, we got the choice between server and workstation. We're just going to go with server because uh, that is the default option. And we'll go into customize here and we'll, we can actually just leave all this uh, the same because it's English US, US keyboard layout. Uh, we'll just put in Michael for the name and we will just call this uh, React OS box, even though it's not really a box. Um, and we will change, oh yeah, the, uh, the system time here is way out of date. Uh, we're gonna go up to 2024. Okay, September 16th, and we'll change it to Eastern time. We'll just leave the time at midnight, that's fine. And uh, yeah, we'll hit next. We get that option between our uh, themes. We're gonna go with the Mizu theme. This is my favorite one out of these. I just really like it. It does, and I think I even said this in the other video, it reminds me of the watercolor theme from uh, the Whistler builds. And we'll go with typical settings for the network. Uh, it'll be part of a work group and not a domain. All right, and we're done. So we're gonna hit finish to have the system restart. Now we are using a debug build, by the way, which basically means that we can, you know, create log files and such. Uh, not that we really need to do that, uh, but just figure that was worth pointing out because uh, it says down there in the bottom, uh, or maybe it doesn't, it doesn't actually say debug, but it says dev. Uh, now, I'm going to go ahead and, um, well, we actually need a driver for the network controller, so it's not going to be able to recognize that at the moment. Installation failed. Yeah, not not really surprising. Okay, well, here's Ethernet controller. Let's see if it's got something for this. Installation failed. No. Uh, of course, it's not going to be able to find any of these drivers because uh, we cannot access the internet and apparently there's nothing stored locally. Uh, so we are going to have to download this stuff manually. Which isn't really surprising, but I was thinking maybe with this being the official test system that they might already have some drivers built in for it. All right, so after a few downloads, we've got some drivers on this USB stick right here. We're going to go ahead and plug that in. And first off, let's see if it recognizes the USB drive in here, which yes, it does. So there it is. We're just going to copy this entire folder here over to the desktop. And then in here, um, there is a chipset driver as well as a CPU driver. I want to make sure I install the chipset driver first. Uh, we also have, you know, the audio driver and the uh, display driver in here as well. And uh, that's the display driver. This right here is the gigabit ethernet driver. Uh, like I, I didn't grab every single driver. I just grabbed kind of the, the core ones here. Like I didn't get the uh, wireless driver because we're probably not even gonna use that. I mean, I can always go back and grab more if we need them. So this is the processor driver. So that means this one up here at the top should be the chipset driver. So there it is, ATI SM bus chipset driver. We'll just extract this to uh, DRV and uh, we don't even see the, the full file path there. So actually it probably already had, oh yeah, because these are Dell drivers that usually extracts it to the, to the C drive by default. So we don't even really need to change that. All right, so we'll go through the install process here and let's hope it works. Setup was unable to complete the installation. Try to reboot your system before running setup. Cool. Okay. But then it says it installed it. <laughs> it successfully installed ATI Southbridge drivers. All right, we'll restart. Okay, well, let's just try the chipset driver setup wizard again. Although we don't even need to extract it. We can just go in here, run setup.exe. And let's try to just go through this. We'll see if it says it already detected it. 
All right, configuring, said it was unable to complete installation, try to reboot your system. And then, yeah, we get that same, <laughs> we get that same message saying it successfully installed it. I wonder if we, maybe if we try it in compatibility mode or something. Nope, that does the same thing for us. Well, let's see. Uh, it didn't ask us to restart, but let's go into Device Manager and see if it's... Oh, there it is! So we should be able to go to the internet browser, and let's see if it's able to pull up Google.com. Well, it's not looking too good. Uh, let's try to go to the old net. Well, the browser doesn't appear to be doing anything. We don't even get, like, a loading indication or anything. We can stop it, like, or no, maybe not. Is, is this, like, not even, like, what's this doing? Um, let's see if we can run CMD here and ping. Yes, we can, so we are online. Okay, so, yeah, the web browser just appears to be, uh, rather finicky here. Maybe try to restart it. You know, we should probably do another system restart anyways, because we did just install a new driver, so let's do that. But, now that we have the network driver installed, I want to see if we can just go into Device Manager, right-click on each of those unknown uh, devices, and see if ReactOS can just download the drivers for them automatically. That would be really, really nice. Um, and yeah, it seems that the, uh, like, Wine Internet Explorer here is just not, like, it's not working at all. This is just like a straight up blank page. I mean, I don't even think it's like, yeah, it's just it's just straight up not not doing anything. Uh, but you see down here we have the uh, network connection icon. So we are online and we already confirmed that by pinging Google. But let's try to go back into device management or device manager, I should say. We'll go to other devices. Let's try the audio one. So we'll go in here, driver, update driver. Install driver automatically. Installation failed. Driver could not be found. Okay, this is not looking too good. All right, so I guess that wasn't going to work as well as I thought. Um, what else can we do here? Well, we can go into the ReactOS Applications Manager. I wonder, I think this has drivers uh, in it as well. I mean, there's a whole bunch of applications and stuff, but let's see. Yeah, drivers. Okay, here we go. Perfect, perfect. Okay, so, well, actually, this is just, uh, yeah, VirtualBox, Snappy Driver Installer. Uh, we could try to go through Snappy Driver Installer. Um, we tried to do that in the original video, so we could try that again. Although, I think we need, does, I, I thought the light version didn't work. Maybe it works in these nightly builds, but we had to actually get the entire, like, driver database because this light version wasn't supported. And then, yeah, we have a Sound Blaster for VMware and NVIDIA display drivers for uh, these cards here, which, I mean, this is not, this, this does not have an NVIDIA card in it. So uh, that does not help us, unfortunately. Okay, well, one thing we can do, I'm here back in the extracted driver files, and here's the uh, video one. So we try to run setup here, and it fails. There is also this issetup.exe which is for the ATI software. Is this the entire driver? Unable to load ATICIM.dll. Okay, so, um, well, hang on a second. Setup failed to run installation, and it crashed. Although there is this driver folder, and is there... Okay, well, here's another setup file. Can we run this? ATI display driver setup. All right, all right. Let's see if this one works. I was trying to see if there was, like, you know, if there was some cab files in here. Or, uh, or, or not cab, a um, INF file, you know, where we could go in and just install the... Oh, yeah, well, I mean, here here it is right here. So, okay, we could, if this doesn't work, just go in to Device Manager and tell it to, you know, just install the driver from here. But let's see if this setup wizard works, which it... Yeah, okay, that's not going to work. So, all right, let's go into Device Manager... And, you know, remember, we tried to do this with the network driver before, but there wasn't, you know, it was just the setup file. There wasn't, like, an INF file or anything. So, if we go to display adapters, go to driver, update driver, install driver from specific location. Now, do we want the, um, this was, like, 2000 XP and XP6A. This might be, um, maybe the 64-bit driver or... I don't know. I'm just going to go with the with the 2K XP because that's 2000 XP and we'll select that folder. There we go. Look at that. All right. So it finished installing the driver. So we'll hit OK. 
I'm going to, uh, well, l let's just go ahead and restart because we apparently have installed the video driver, so I want to just restart and have it actually try to use that. Well, it's taken longer on this screen here, which could be a good sign or a bad sign. It could have just locked up. All right, well, I think it froze because it's been over 15 minutes and uh, we are still here. And uh, yeah, so we're just going to have to force power this thing off. And we'll try to start it up again and just see if it happens to boot this time. All right, well, yeah, it looks like that display driver just screwed everything up. So we're going to see if we can uh, boot into a last known configuration or, or safe mode, uh, probably. Let's just um, start up here and... Uh, hold down F8 and we are let's try last known good configuration and see if that works but I have a feeling we're just gonna have to boot into safe mode to ensure that the old driver is loaded well same story there so it's safe mode time and well here's safe mode booting up we're just at a black screen which isn't looking good either so am I gonna have to reinstall this entire system it's kind of looking that way Okay, well, it's it's been a while uh, since the last clip, and I've basically been spending all of that time trying to get these drivers to work on this thing in numerous different ways. I have over four hours of footage recorded. I've gone through so many CDs. I've tried to use the drivers from the Dell website that I had been using before. I tried to download older versions of those drivers when those didn't work. I tried to use the Dell resource CD for this thing that I found on the Internet Archive. I tried to use Snappy Driver Installer. None of that worked. And basically, I'm cutting all of that footage from the video because I discovered that I was essentially wasting my time because as a last ditch effort to get this working I posted on Twitter and I was like hey does anybody know what drivers I'm supposed to use with this thing and uh, believe it or not one of the react OS developers replied and said yeah pretty much nothing except the network drivers currently work in these nightly builds which despite what you might think was actually very relieving to hear because now I knew that I was not the only person running into all these problems uh, but I still wanted to see if maybe there was something I could do to get these working so I asked the developer if there was anything else I could try and I got to give a huge thank you to the dark fire for spending just a bunch of time trying to uh, help me get this working uh, and the good news is we actually got it working at least the video drivers I'll touch on the audio driver in a moment here what I had to do just to sum this up for you is I downloaded a modified ISO that the dark fire sent me that had some patches and fixes in it I reinstalled react OS from that that ISO on this computer for like, at that point I had lost track of how many times I'd installed this thing and install one of the video drivers that I had. I'll, I'll link the exact one I used uh, along with this modified ISO down below. Uh, then instead of restarting the system, I shut it down so I could remove the hard drive from this laptop and plug it into another PC to copy over these files from a Windows Server 2003 SP2 installation to replace the ones on the React OS drive. So yes, this means that we are no longer using 100 percent react os code but this does work although i can only start up the system in debug mode because it just blue screens in regular mode but if you remember from before when i installed the video driver it would hang upon booting up in debug mode so yeah now we get into the operating system we can actually do stuff and if i go into properties here you can see under settings that we are utilizing the ati radeon x1270 proper graphics adapter now regarding the audio situation uh, unfortunately like I said we could not get that to work uh, despite also trying to copy over some system files from server 2003 uh, so yeah I that's just something they have to work on uh, some more I guess but just getting video working is pretty huge although um, as we open up windows and stuff you'll see that uh, there is you know a little bit of jankiness going on like with the title bar here and we try to you know resize stuff it's not perfect uh, I mean, you see, yeah, like check all this out up here. It's mainly in like the title bars. I've seen some stuff with the uh, uh, scroll bars. Actually, the first ISO that uh, was sent to me from the dark fire, none of these icons on the desktop would render properly. And there was a lot more uh, display jankiness going on. The second one that was sent to me um, actually fixed a lot of that, which is great. But yeah, without any further ado, we are going to try out a handful of games here. And we're going to start with, uh, we're going to do a little bit of a change to the Half-Life rule and try out 
Half-Life Blue Shift, because I just remembered you don't need to have the original Half-Life installed to install this. Because, I mean, I've had this on my shelf, and every time I've seen it, I'm like, oh, I should try that, but I have to have Half-Life installed, and if I got to install Half-Life, I might as well just play Half-Life. Well, no, this is a standalone game, so we're just going to put in this install CD, and uh, see if uh, we can get some Blue Shift action going on. Now, according to the developer uh, that sent me all this stuff, we should be able to utilize OpenGL, and we may run into problems, but luckily there is something else I can try uh, if we do, uh, but hopefully it'll just work. Hey, it's Michael from the future here. I just wanted to pop in and comment on this really quickly because I completely misunderstood what the developer was saying here, and it affected how I tried to run these games in the next clip. So, React OS natively can only utilize OpenGL, but the developers have implemented WineD3D, which is a direct 3D to OpenGL wrapper that essentially acts as a translation layer to allow apps that make use of direct 3D to run. However, in the ISO that the Darkfire sent me, that was removed because I was going to be copying over those files from Windows Server 2003 that included a bunch of D3D DLLs, and when I did that, this build of React OS was now able to run DirectX stuff without the need for that translation layer, whereas I thought that OpenGL was the only thing that was going to work, and that's why in this next segment I'm very obsessed with selecting OpenGL in these games, but we'll revisit DirectX later in this video because, well, I'm not Going to spoil that for you. I did want to save this uh, gaming portion for on video because I figured it would be, you know, exciting uh, as opposed to you guys watching me install drivers for four hours. Um, so let's just open up the uh, disk here and let's run, where is a uh, setup? There it is. Let's run setup.exe and see uh, if this works well. <laughs> so right off the bat, we got some uh, interestingness going on. Uh, yeah! Alright, I guess I'm gonna have to put a seizure warning uh, on this video. We can't actually see- okay, so I can see the install is like right here, so we'll click on that. Uh, <laughs> this is shaping up to be just awesome. Uh, so yeah, see we got some more of that uh, display jankiness going on. But, let's just hit next here. Totally gonna read the license agreement. Next, install. Uh, sure, we'll get a shortcut to AT&T WorldNet setup, Pff, why not? Uh, and let's install it. Alright, so far so good. And we're gonna register later, as in never, and we'll hit finish. And, okay, it's opening up the auto run here, which is just the same menu again, so we're gonna get out of that. Hopefully, uh, the game doesn't... Oh wait, setup is not complete. Why is this... that's interesting. I mean, it has installed, right? I mean, this is just like the auto run thing. Well, let's click on play blue shift. Uh doesn't appear to do anything? Oh, okay, well, we actually saw the whole menu there for a second. Yeah, I don't, I don't think it's, I don't think it's running. Okay, bshift.exe, I think that's the game executable, let's just, or that could be the... Nope, that was the game executable, I guess. Okay, we're just gonna exit out of that, even though we technically exited setup, I guess, and here is a shortcut on the desktop to bshift.exe, so let's just try to run this. Okay, I heard like the fan spin up a little bit. No disc inserted. What are you talking about? Now I do have that version of Half-Life with the no CD patch. So if this is like a, like an issue with it recognizing the disc drive for whatever reason, we could try that. Um, maybe in compatibility mode or something. I mean, hey, it's worth a try. Let's do uh, compatibility mode for... Let's do Windows 2000 first. Nope, that's not looking good. Uh, at least we're getting some output, even if it's not what we particularly want. But let's just try uh, 98 slash me. But I have a feeling it's going to do the same thing. I actually don't even think it's running. Okay, there it is. Is it just crashing? It is just crashing. Look at that. Well, that's certainly interesting. Uh, okay. So, yeah, I'm, I'm guessing it doesn't like something with the CD. I mean, it's it's in here, but it's saying it can't find it. So, let's go ahead and pop in that uh, no CD patch for Half-Life and see if we can play the game that way. Half-Life requires Service Pack 3 or above. Okay, let's try XP Service Pack 3. I'm assuming that's the Service Pack 3 it's referring to. Because you see down here that Reactos is reporting NT 5.2, which is XP or Server 2003, uh, Service Pack 2. So now we've changed it. Okay, okay, alright. Alright. 
Uh, looking good so far. Uh, of course, the menu here is a little bit screwed up. All right, well, let's just start a new game and just without modifying any of the video settings and see how this works, which, okay. <laughs> oh my gosh, look at that. So, yeah, we're just using, at least we should be anyways, using the, the software renderer, so we're not utilizing OpenGL right now, but, uh, it works. I mean, you see the frame rate's not perfect, but let me see if I can find the, okay, so that should be settings. Um, this should be screen size, video mode. Are we going to even be able to see which option is OpenGL? Uh, yeah, select video modes. Okay, okay. So we're right now 320 by 240 software. Let's change that to OpenGL. Okay, comes up with this. I think that's okay. OpenGL driver default. Let's do 320 by 240. Now, one of these up here, can we just do enter? Because one of these buttons is like cancel and one of them is okay. Um, was that cancel or was that okay? I think that was okay. Where was that? Like right up here. Go back, go back, return to game. It should like, yeah, there we go. Okay, yep, there we go. We got that loading text. It does that in OpenGL. Selected OpenGL mode is not supported by your video card. Ah, oh, man, okay. And if you're wondering what happens when we try DirectX, it just says the selected Direct3D mode is not supported by your video card. Before I go ahead, because like I mentioned, we do have a, a potential fix. Before I copy more files over from Server 2003, I want to try out these other two games just to see if, you know, maybe they work. Oh, look at that. We got a black box as a mouse cursor now. Uh, oh, there we go. Okay, now it just fixed itself. We're going to try out uh, Call of Duty 1. Uh, this is Call of Duty Deluxe Edition with both the original game and United Offensive. It's a European copy, actually. Uh, I think this supports OpenGL. Uh, it says that it needs uh, a DirectX compatible card on the back. But from what I read online, it looks like it supports OpenGL uh, as a video mode. So we're going to pop it in and find out. COD 1, there it is. Let's run setup.exe. Okay, all right, this is looking good. We can actually see everything. Install the C program files Call of Duty, that's fine. Well, this is great. We can actually see everything so far. There's no weird nonsense going on. All right, it looks like we need disk two. Okay, well, we have run into a bit of a problem because it looks like the installer finished. It's come up with this uh, install screen for DirectX 9.0b, but the system has frozen up. Like, I, I can't uh, move the mouse around. I can't do anything. Uh, so we're going to have to uh, do a force power off here. Now, it's interesting because it says Call of Duty requires Microsoft DirectX, but I looked online. Apparently, there is an OpenGL video mode supported by this game. So I wonder if installing that would, like, break something. Um, but if the game installed, we're going to try, which it looks like it did. Let me just open up uh, my computer here and go to our C drive, and let's see under, so probably program files, Call of Duty. Um, I mean, I don't know offhand what a, you know, what a full install of Call of Duty looks like in here, but we've got the single player and the multiplayer executables, got the shortcuts on the desktop, so let's try to run single player just regularly here without any compatibility layers or anything and see what happens. Unload the debugger and try again. Well, if that's referring, like, if it's detected that we're in debug mode, we can't get out of this because it just blue screens when trying to boot into regular mode. That's certainly interesting. Um, I guess we can try to run this in compatibility mode. Let's do XP Service Pack 3. Uh, okay, same exact thing. Maybe we can try... I mean, SP3 does... I mean, this game predates SP3. Let's try 2000. Nope. All right, so it looks like compatibility mode is not going to fix this. How about 98 slash me? Okay. How about the multiplayer executable? Okay, we got a splash screen. And, well, I, I don't know what exactly we have here. We have like an outline of the desktop, you know, with like the taskbar in this window here. I don't think the system is frozen, or maybe it has, but we can move the mouse cursor around. But there, I just, I mean... Maybe it's like, you know, it's got the menu loaded, but like like in Half-Life where it was all screwed up, it could just be that we can't see anything. Can we do an Alt-Tab here? No. Control-Alt-Delete, maybe? No. 
Well, um, do we have to force restart again? Okay, well, I was able to do Windows key R to open up the run prompt here, and it looks like we got an error message or something. So the system is not locked up. Okay, yeah, I can still type in here. That is very interesting. And yeah, it's just like, whoa, okay. I don't know what exactly I did. I was just like literally mashing keys up. I mean, I was pressing Alt Tab, I was pressing the Windows key. Now it finally opened up. And it looks like we have a React OS crash reporter or something down here, but let's see if we can open up Task Manager. Okay, now it's opening up and let's just end that process. All right, so I think what I'm gonna do is uh, shut down this thing, copy over those additional files and uh, see what that does for us. You know, something tells me that this is gonna cause the system to blue screen. Thankfully, this laptop has a very easily removable hard drive. You can literally just take this cover off and slide it out after you remove a couple screws. Well, we got past the boot process. I feel like we should be seeing a desktop by now, <laughs> but I don't see anything. Yeah, that's, that's no fun. Huh, I wonder why that is. Could that be maybe that we copied over these files and that's causing it just to not load the desktop? All right, let's try force power off. All right, this time I'm not gonna cut anything out, so I'll just let you uh, experience the whole process here. So we start debug, we get to this screen, this like verbose output screen, uh, tells us all the files it's loading. It freezes on this mup.sys for a little bit, but then it gets past it. This is what it was freezing on earlier in the video. Um, but you see, then it loads those additional ones. And right here, when the screen dims, I don't know how well this will show up on video, but the screen will dim, and then it should come back on and show the desktop, like right about now. That's what it was doing before. So, yeah, I think that swapping these files just... Uh, screwed things up considerably more. However, um, I'm gonna let it sit here for a little while, and if it still doesn't get anywhere, which I don't think it's going to, I'm gonna try to boot into the regular mode and see if maybe, miraculously, uh, adding those files prevents a blue screen from happening, though I think it's probably just gonna blue screen like it was doing previously. But hey, I mean, at this point, I'm willing to try anything. All right, it's been about 10 minutes, and as you can see, we have gotten nowhere. So we're gonna do another force power off here and see if we can boot into the regular mode, which I have a feeling the answer is gonna be no, but eh, it's worth a try. So React OS, and right after the boot screen is when the BSOD comes up. And there it is. And it complains about NTOS kernel.exe. That's what it was doing before. So we are in uh, essentially the exact same position here. So uh, I guess I'm gonna remove those files now and uh, yeah, figure out something else. All right, well, we're back and I've got some good news because we have this system in what is probably its best state since I started recording this video. It is still not perfect. It's actually far from perfect, but it does work and we can play some games on it, which we're going to do momentarily here. So to give you the rundown of what happened, uh, the Darkfire sent me another modified ISO that I have installed on here. However, when it starts up, you can see that the system immediately freezes, so I, I can't do anything. Nor Normally this would be a problem, however, the Darkfire helped me hook this thing up over the network to a debugger, which I've got running in the background here. That allows us to hit this go button a few times and we can basically get past whatever was causing the system to break there and freeze up, which is incredibly awesome. So now uh, we can use the system. You see, I've got a, a few things installed here. I've been trying a, a bunch of different games off camera. However, only like two of them work properly. Take a guess at which ones you think they are. Put it in the comments below. Uh, but before we, we get into that, um, I want to uh, briefly touch a little bit more on the whole DirectX OpenGL situation because if you remember before in the video, I talked about how we've got those DirectX files copied over from server 2003 so we can natively utilize DirectX on the system now. OpenGL, well, it sucks, like completely. There is a major slowdown bug, just to show you, if we go into my computer here, uh, funnily enough, the uh, menu bar and like everything else is gone from here. Uh, if we go into the C drive here, I've got this uh, gears program copied over. You have to actually open it up in command prompts. 
and we'll uh, go up to our C drive and run WGL gears.exe. And I believe it's uh, dash, let's see here, dash info. That's the one. So we run WGL gears dash info. The system immediately freezes up. We can just bypass that by pressing go in the debugger again. And then the debugger starts spitting out all these errors here, and you can see that it still hasn't actually like started the program. Uh, I got this to start before, but the frame rate was so abysmal, it didn't even show like the animation or anything. It was like 0, 0.00 something frames per second. It was awful because there is apparently an OpenGL slowdown bug uh, with this particular video card, which was really interesting when I told this to the Darkfire, because apparently the uh, React OS developers were aware of this bug for NVIDIA cards, but not for AMD cards. So we kind of discovered a bug here, I guess, which is kind of cool. Essentially, uh, we can't utilize anything OpenGL on this system. Now, as for the games here, Call of Duty, uh, the single player executable just does this exact same thing where it complains about the debugger. And now we actually have one loaded, but it's just detecting that the system is in debug mode, so it refuses to run. I haven't been able to find a way around this. Call of Duty multiplayer just crashes immediately upon startup. Can't get that to work. I have Steam installed because I tried to install a copy of Half-Life 2 that installed Steam, because of course it did. Uh, couldn't get that to work. Half-Life 1 point oh here does work it basically is exactly the same way as it was before we can still only utilize the software renderer however check this out if we launch it here the menu's fine all those graphical glitches from before uh have been fixed so that's pretty awesome uh but we can go into configuration just like before we can try to select direct x or direct 3d as the video mode we'll do 640 by 480 default device hit ok done done new game and we'll do medium and it will complain about the D3D mode not being supported by our video card. Uh, OpenGL, I mean, any time that you try to utilize an OpenGL mode in, in a game, it's just going to do the exact same thing that the uh, WGL Gears application did. The debugger is going to freak out. It's going to just lock up and really slow down the system and not work at all. Uh, so I'm not even going to do that. But I think the reason why we're having problems with DirectX in here um, is because uh, there, there might be like a version difference or something where, you know, it just doesn't detect that we have the correct version uh, running on the system here. Because again, we are able to utilize DirectX and, and well, Direct3D to be specific here, uh, stuff natively with all those files being copied over from Windows Server 2003. Uh, one of those games that does work is this shareware version of Diablo 2. So we can go into single player here. Um, here's my one character I made. I have never played Diablo, just being totally honest here. Uh, I, I, I've been told I should try it, uh, but I, I have never played it. But yeah, you can see this is totally playable. Of course, we have no sound. That, I mean, that sucks. That definitely uh, detracts from the experience here. But we can go around and do your your things you do in Diablo, I guess. You know, I almost forgot to mention Pong the next level. Uh, I did cut out the footage um, that I had in the previous recording segment because, again, me being under the impression that only OpenGL stuff was going to work, this game doesn't even have an OpenGL video mode from what I can tell, so I didn't even want to, like, bother including that because, well, it's actually the installer froze and I was trying to get it installed on here. But I did copy over the game files from another computer. So if we go in here to program files under Pong, I forget what happens when I try to run this. I think it just, uh... oh yeah, that's right. It's the same CD nonsense. It just complains about, <laughs> so watch this. I'll put the disc in the drive and we'll hit continue. And it just says, please insert the Pong CD into drive. We can exit out of it, open it up again. It does not detect it. And if you remember before, we had the exact same thing happen with BlueShift. So there, I guess there's just some bug. Maybe it's in this React OS build or React OS as a whole. I'm not sure. But yeah, we can't get this game to run. What we can get running, though, is Halo 1. I've got this Halo trial version on here. This runs totally fine, which is just incredible because this is a game that I can play on this thing. Uh, so we go to campaign here. We'll just continue. Uh, there is just this like, I I've actually never played the Halo trial before. I was kind of confused when it launched you into uh, not the first mission. <laughs> I was like, wait a second, this is like midway through the game. What are, what are we doing here on the, uh, uh, yeah, the silent cartographer. That's the name of the mission. What are we doing on the silent cartographer already? But uh, yeah, this is um, in this Halo trial. It's just probably 
you know, there's a lot more action going on in this mission, so it makes sense to have it uh, included uh, as, you know, a demo thing. So, yeah, you see, you know, uh, we're not getting a perfect frame right here, but we are. I think all the graphics have defaulted to, like, the highest possible setting, so we can go in and change that. But even here, like, we're, I mean, it's, it's not too bad. It's not the best, but it's not terrible. Uh, let's go into options here and just change uh, those graphics settings, because I'm pretty sure... Um, yeah, it's got high particles, high texture quality. Oh, and we're capped at 30 FPS too. Let's bump that to uh, no V-Sync. And yeah, refresh rate 60 hertz. Let's just see if that does it for us. Let's just uh, hit OK here. Uh, I feel like that's better. I mean, yeah, like over here, you know, when I mouse over here and there's a little more action going on, it does slow down noticeably, but... Uh, it is, it is totally playable. I mean, again, pff, look at me shooting at my own guy. Whoops. Uh, yeah, it is totally playable. I mean, yeah, look, I can pan around here just fine. Uh, just to give this the best possible experience, why don't we just lower everything? So we'll go back in here. Uh, decals, no. Shadows, no. Uh, specular, no. Particles, low. Just turn that to low. And we'll leave it at 800 by 600. And we'll resume. So, oh yeah, that is, whew, that is really nice. Okay, well, it's still getting some slowdown, but that is, uh, that is super nice. Yeah, I will, I mean, again, having no sound does kind of suck, but I will gladly take this over, um, all of that nonsense, or I should say after all that nonsense that we went through, uh, just to get something running on here. So, um... Yeah, I mean, there you have it, guys. That is uh, the end of another React OS marathon. I know that this video was mainly focusing on... Oh, and yeah, by the way, this happens when you close Halo. Uh, so let me... I think I just have to restart now. That's the other really nice thing about the debugger. You don't have to do a force power off. You can just uh, restart it right from there. So, um, yeah, I think that is going to finally bring this video to a close. I have to once again give a huge thank you to the Darkfire for spending probably two or three days with me at this point uh, trying to get this working. Yeah, we, we spent a while on this, and I'm glad to uh, finally have something to show for it and uh, actually show React OS running pretty well. You know, to be honest, I think this project is really, really cool, and I am definitely looking forward to seeing the progress that is made on it. Um, but it is, it's far from being a, a daily driver OS. But, you know, I feel like anybody who knows what React OS is already knows that this is not an operating system you're going to want to be using on your primary system. But, you know, to have on a secondary system like this to mess around with, it is pretty fun. Uh, I mean, I, I have to say it has been enjoyable. Uh, you know, as, as frustrating as this was at times, it was enjoyable just to troubleshoot this, get it working, get some stuff uh, running properly on it. It's just really satisfying in the end when you, uh, you know, when you go through all that. So, uh, yeah, I, I will have the, again, all the links down below to everything that I've talked about in this video. And, uh, yeah, I just want to thank you all so much for watching. If you enjoyed this one, be sure to give it a thumbs up, get subscribed, maybe consider becoming a patron or a channel member to get early access to these videos before anybody else. But either way, as always, I will see you in the next video.